You've got six-figure salaries in this union. You've got Already. workers, including crane operators, making over $300,000. Now, a 77% pay increase, they're over half a million dollars. Ah, yes. Well, you know, it's not corporate greed. It's, it's union greed. That's the good kind. Kind of like anti-white racism is the good kind of racism. You see, today's you see today's Democrat racist uh, story. They're uh, they're amazing, aren't they? They love racial discrimination. They are the Democrat Party, the party of the plantation of the Confederate States of America, the bullwhip, the lynching tree, the Democrat Party. Yes, sir. Lots of uh, stuff going on today. CNN is uh, reporting, Fox News now reporting that Iran, according to the White House, planning an imminent missile attack on Israel, a ballistic missile attack on Israel. Where are the peace talks going on? Who's, where is our Secretary of State, our Chief Diplomat, Antony Blinken? Honestly, uh, mayhem, pandemonium everywhere. We have the International Longshoremen's Association, that is the Longshoremen's Union, the Dock Workers Union, uh, went on strike. They, uh, the, the clock tolled at midnight, and uh, nobody showed up this morning for work. And they've got a lot of people picket lines. There's uh, been a certain amount of violence, too. At least one guy showed up at the Baltimore Harbor. He is a uh, trash collector. And he showed up in his truck, and he was beaten by the violent mob of criminals who are trying to shake down the country, extort from the country as much as they possibly can. All they want is a 77% pay increase over the uh, six years of the contract. Plus, they want their pension tripled, which the uh, the powers that be, they've already offered a 50% pay increase over six years but not 77%, which is what the union is demanding, gun to the head. And also they've been offered uh, the, the triple their pension. I'd like a tripled pension. And and uh, also better health care options. They've been offered that. They were offered that yesterday, but the union shot it down. They grabbed it by the hair, shot it in the head, uh, threw it into a ravine. It's uh, honestly, it's like Yellowstone. It's like, you, know, you watch that TV show, Yellowstone. They shoot a lot of people, sh- throw them in that ravine. All right, now let's go to, because the soundbite that we opened with there was Chris Spear, the uh, CEO of the American Trucking Association, which is a legit and powerful and legitimately so organization based in Washington, D.C. It's a lobbying group, too. Um, And he's talking about the, uh, the 36 ports that have been shut down and how the soundbite we played, crane operators in ports in the United States make up to $300,000 a year, $300,000 a year to be crane operator in our ports. And and they're fighting against automation, too, because they don't like progress. They, they like everything to be frozen in time because, you know, all the money's going to the leadership of the union. But if you make $300,000 a year, you got a 77% raise, you'd be making more than $500,000 a year to be a crane operator in a port area. And I would want a job as a crane operator in a port area. Uh, How about you, Jasmine? Crane operator, port area? Jasmine wants to be a crane operator in a port area. She just just fluffed her hair. That's right. I want to be a crane operator. (laughs) And uh, That's right. Because who wouldn't want to be a crane operator in a port area for $500,000 a year? No kidding. And, And they're opposing automation because they don't like modernity. They don't like they don't like progress. They don't like any of that. Um, our our Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, uh, reminded that we haven't seen anything like this since the 1970s in the United States. Being interviewed by Becky Quick on CNBC was Gina Raimondo, the uh, uh, Commerce Secretary. She said she hasn't been paying attention to this, what she said yesterday. She could care less. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, the Transportation Secretary, he's busy doing warm-ups and rehearsals for Tim Wall's for the debate tonight. So he's been busy for days doing that. So our Commerce Secretary paying no attention. Our our uh, Transportation Secretary paying no attention. And Joe Biden, incapable of paying attention. 
Kamala Harris, even when she does pay attention, it doesn't lead to anything because her brain is also no good. Remarkable stuff. And uh, uh, teeing it up like that, let's let's go to the head of the Longshoremen's Union, the International Longshoremen's Association, it's called the ILA. You have to call it the ILA because it's the International Longshoremen Association. It's an association, honestly. And uh, the guy uh, comes off like a complete gangster, just a total gangster. His name is Harold Daggett, Harold Daggett, obviously from New York or New Jersey. And he, um, he came out and spoke. He came out and spoke. And again, the head of the Longshoremen's Union. And, and he says, well, we negotiated last night, but they only offered us a 50% pay increase over the course of six years. But a 50% pay increase was offered when the demand is 77% pay increase over seven years. Uh, excuse me, over six years. So that's well over 11% per year consistently. Another 11%, another 11%, and, they, and uh, whatever it is, 12% per year. And uh, isn't that great? And they've got all their union-made signs outside yelling about corporate greed, and they're yelling corporate greed. You know, uh, and, and as, uh, honestly, the head of the American Trucking Association, Chris Spears, said, said you want to talk uh, corporate greed? Let's talk union greed because this is another thing altogether. So let's go now to Harold Daggett, uh, who is the head of the International Longshoremen's Association which is the, the union that has the ports. And, and again, just keep in mind that the ports we're talking about, uh, and they've shut them down today, will cripple everything on the East Coast. At least 45,000 union employees have gone out on strike from three dozen different ports. 85,000 ILA union members are out there. 45,000 have gone on strike. And according to J.P. Morgan, this could cost our economy $5 billion per day, $5 billion per day. And it'll cost our GDP, our gross domestic product, between $4.5 billion and $7.5 billion, up to $7.5 billion a week in GDP. And that could be bad for Kamala Harris. There are people who are so cynical that they think that Joe Biden and the White House are ignoring this because they know it'll be bad for Kamala and the Democrats, and there's a lot of, you know, Game of Thrones stuff going on in the Democrat Party. But this could definitely be bad for Kamala and the Democrats if, once again, our grocery store shelves are empty as they were at the beginning of the Biden administration, you may recall, because of the anarchists in the Democrat Party. But the, the ports are shut down in... Houston, New Orleans, Mobile, Alabama, Tampa, Florida, Miami, Jacksonville, Florida, then Savannah, Charleston, Wilmington, North Carolina, Norfolk, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, where there's been violence already, Uh, Wilmington, Delaware, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, New York and New Jersey, the ports, one giant port, and Boston, Mass. Uh, All of the ports shut down, crippled by, by this guy, Harold Daggett, who uh, was offered not a 77% increase over six years, but a 50% increase over six years, in addition to tripling their their pensions, their pension uh, payback, and much more options, better options on health care and uh, benefits on health care, and they rejected it. So no 50% wage increase and tripling your pension and new health care options that's not enough. You have uh, been rejected. And here's the guy in charge of rejecting that. His name is Harold Daggett, the head of the Longshoremen's Union. The office that we had, it didn't work out. And I just told him, so long, goodbye. I'm going with my members. We're always willing to sit down when the right numbers hit. They know what the number is. This is uh, his, his uh, code name is Tony Soprano. It is, uh, the guy is... The guy's just dripping with gangsterism. Uh, that's the negotiation. And uh, where is Joe Biden? Where is Kamala Harris? Where is the Transportation Secretary? Where is the Commerce Secretary? Nowhere to be found for all four of them because they're not on our side and they're hacks. Just amazing. Here is Harold Daggett of the Longshoremen's Union. Everybody went to work during COVID. Nobody stayed home. 
Well, I want to be compensated for that. I'm not asking for the world. They know what I want. They oh. know what I want. And if oh, they man. don't, no. Then I have to go into the street and we have to fight for what we rightfully deserve. Then we go into the street and I have to fight for what we rightfully deserve. He says, I, I. Then he goes into we. Uh, but really, it's about I, I. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Then we have to go into the street. And I saw they're wearing T-shirts. They got T-shirts that say, if it's a fight you want, it's a war you'll get. Total gangsterism. This, uh, uh, if it's a fight they want, it's a war they're going to get with their ILA flag. And they got these goons. And somebody's already been violently attacked at the port in Baltimore because he was trying to do his job. And he's not a scab. He's just doing his job. But here is uh, here is uh, Harold Daggett of the ILA. We, you know, we got another abbreviation we've got to adapt to, build into our thing. Now, listen to this. He's going to kneecap people. He's going for kneecaps. If we don't get to 77%, then it's kneecap time. Power drills and hammers and kneecaps. The ball peen hammer. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a lot. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money, to pay their salaries. Well, they went from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? They're going to be like this. You're better off sitting down, and let's get a contract. And let's move on with this world. In today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. I will cripple you. That is the, uh, uh, honestly, this is on the waterfront. It's, uh, it's total gangsterism. It's a shakedown. It's a gun to the head. We can screw up the U.S. economy. There's an election coming up. We've got power. We're going to abuse it. The guy's a gangster. He should be raided by the FBI before the sun comes up tomorrow with dogs and battering rams and helmets and, and uh, bright lights. Just uh, just amazing stuff. Yes, sir. We're going to kneecap you. We will cripple you. That's literally what he said. We will cripple you. It's what this hood said. He ought to be in cuffs. He ought to be dragged away. You know, like he's protesting outside of an abortion clinic and praying. He should be treated that harshly. He should get 22 years in prison, just like Enrique Torrio uh, for his role in January 6th, although he was in a hotel room in Baltimore on January 6th, but he got 22 years in prison from the gangsters running the White House. Uh, Channel 5, Fox Channel 5 here in Washington, D.C., they went up to Baltimore to cover the uh, the dock strike, and you'll never guess what happened. This is their reporter, Melanie Alnwick. Melanie Alnwick uh, has a uh, guy, he's a, a trash man coming in with his truck, wants to do his job. He's not a member of the Longshoremen's Union, but he got his face bashed in, and there's blood pouring down his face. The longshoreman walked off the job at 12.01 a.m. There was confusion and anger as picketers initially tried to stop trucks from entering, and it did turn violent. I come here for seven years. I pull the um, trash and the debris out of here for the, uh, for the Port of Baltimore, and um, the officer told me um, to come back and make um go in there to get out of my way, and they attacked me and broke the windshield and, and, and lacerated my face. And lacerated my face. And he's literally bleeding while he is doing the interview with Melanie Alnwick on on Fox Channel 5 in Washington. Now, we don't know exactly what happened. The union members said the truck hit one of the picketers as they swarmed around it. We did see an ambulance come to assist, and we know that uh, uh, that gentleman did speak with police officers. Again, we'll, we'll let the uh, authorities sort out exactly what happened there. We'll let the authorities sort out, sort out exactly what happened there. But, you know, the guy got his face bashed in, got the window smashed by, by the goons, by the thugs, uh, because the president of the union says, we will kneecap you. Well, you know, there's going to be violence. And then there's violence before even threatened violence, I think. pretty. We will cripple you. 
Melanie Alnwick. The U.S. Marine Alliance, which represents the ports, said it offered 50 percent pay increases and an agreement to keep current limits on automation in addition to increased contributions to the retirement plans. But uh, apparently that was not acceptable to the union members. We don't know what the next steps are in terms of the negotiations. Well, to the union leaderships, a 50 percent pay increase over six years plus um, enhancements to the retirement, to the pensions, plus enhancements to the health care. And, uh, and it wasn't the union membership, uh, Melanie, that voted it down. It was the gangsters in charge who will cripple you because you give a radical lefty a uh, thimble full of power and they'll bash your skull in with it. Uh, that's, uh, that's your Democrat Party in 2024. Hey, you know that the best-selling Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifier uses Oxy technology that helps to quickly destroy a whole lot of different viruses, odors, mold spores, and more floating around in the air. Thousands of five-star reviews on Al Gore's amazing Internet. You know it works like a champ. We've got two at home. We've got a third one in a box now, too. Any smell will vanish after just a few seconds with the thunderstorm being on. Odors from trash cans and cigarette smoke your mother-in-law's cooking, even left-wing protesters are no match for the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. The powerful thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules that seek out and help destroy odors. These molecules even go behind and underneath furniture. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm, and you don't have to buy filters over and over again to replace. The Eden Pure Thunderstorm, you can hold in your hand. They're only this big, just like this. Plug them right into the outlet they hang right there. They're, uh, they're quite amazing. And, and right now, you can save $200 American on an Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. You get three units for under $200. Put one in your basement, the teenager's room, the kitchen, any place you like to breathe clean, fresh air. All you have to do is go to EdenPureDeals.com and use the discount code CHRIS3 to save that $200. That's EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is C-H-R-I-S and the number three. Yes, sir. All right. So the uh, this is the Democrat Party, too. With their, They're sleeping with the unions as well. Um, our government has become a gangster state, and these are their allies. We're at 888-630-9625. Let's get a contract, and let's move on with this world. In today's world, I'll cripple you. All right, so we have the uh, union strike. Uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris doing nothing. Their Secretary of Transportation doing nothing. Secretary of Commerce doing nothing. They're doing nothing. We've got dozens of ports shut down from the Texas-Mexico border all the way up the East Coast, around the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, and up the East Coast. And uh, the government doesn't appear to be doing anything about it. But we should expect supplies to be cut off in in uh, myriad areas, chemicals, iron, steel, medical equipment, furniture, cars, and trucks. Oh, well, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on today <laughs> in the world. The uh, Longshoremen's Union went on strike at midnight last night. We should expect to uh, see supplies start drying up chemicals and pharmaceuticals, iron and steel, furniture, all kinds of medical equipment, cars, trucks, machinery, engines. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, the Longshoremen's Union is feeling their oats. They're feeling very powerful right now because they've timed it to impact the Democrats who are in charge at the White House and the departments and agencies now. And uh, they've, the union has put a gun to Joe Biden's head. Joe Biden doesn't know what that is, the gun or the head. But remarkable stuff, and we should expect that uh, billions and billions will be lost uh, very quickly, 45,000 Union members out on strike. I don't blame the union. I blame the, blame the union leadership. And they've, uh, they're have they holding a gun to the head of the American people. And it's a shakedown. It's a, it's a racketeering move. It probably violates the RICO statutes. But 
But as long as they're not grandmothers praying at abortion clinics, I don't think they have to worry about an FBI raid tomorrow morning before the sun comes up. The port strike. It begins today. Isn't it amazing? And tonight we have the presidential debate, but there, uh, the, excuse me, the vice presidential debate. But uh, there may be a lot to talk about because according to the White House, and they blabbed it to all the media that they could find, everybody's got the story. White House says Iran ballistic missile attack on Israel is imminent. Imminent. That's what they say. Uh, For Democrats, that means likely to happen right away. Bloomberg.com, U.S. says Iran preparing to attack Israel with ballistic missiles, plural. And, you know, uh, and I read to you yesterday that the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, I like to say Khamenei, it's more fun for me that way. And it clears my throat, too. And as a broadcaster, I like to clear my throat from time to time. So I, I pronounce certain words. And there's Ali Khamenei. And uh, he's hiding in underground bunkers, according to reports yesterday, because he's worried that Israel's going to drop a bomb on them. You drop a bomb on me. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of that going on there. Israel sent a small number of ground troops into southern Lebanon today because Hezbollah, the army of Allah, funded by Iran, Iran funded by uh, the Democrats in the United States, and and uh, that the, uh, southern Lebanon, where Hezbollah had agreed to to clear out from southern Lebanon and stop attacking Israel, but they were lying. They were lying on both on both counts. So we have that going on. Um, all right, let's go to and and we're standing by. I'll alert you if if Israel uh, starts taking missiles from Iran, and and it's funny because the lefties they will condemn Israel saying, oh, you've got to stop a wider war. You've got to stop a wider war when Hezbollah is attacking you from the north and, and Hamas is attacking you from inside your border and, and, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad as well. And you've got the Houthis attacking you from Yemen. And the Houthis are attacking U.S. warships and commercial shipping going up into the Red Sea, headed toward the Suez Canal and yada, yada, you know. I had a nice uh, boat ride on the Suez Canal one time. It was it was a lot of fun. We were in Cairo, and then we hopped on some Egyptian military helicopters, and we flew from Cairo over to the Suez to the Canal Zone, and boarded some boats there and went motoring up and down the uh, the Suez Canal. It was kind of fun. The Houthi rebels were not nearby; they're down in Yemen, so they didn't fire at us. But but now the uh, you know the Houthis, the Hezbollah. The army of Allah, the, uh, uh, and which is Hezbollah, the the Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, they're all attacking and now Iran, which is behind all of it, with the help of the Democrats in the United States. Iran, according to the Biden White House, is preparing to shower ballistic missiles down on Israel. And what kind of missiles might they have? Have they achieved success with their nuclear weapons program? Because this is the looming concern, the nightmare scenario, is Iran, uh, which has been enriching uranium under the, the JCPOA, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action that was put together by the idiot Obama administration that allowed Iran to become wealthier and wealthier while still enriching uranium and spinning centrifuges and advancing their ballistic missile program while writing death to the Jews on the nose cones of their ballistic missiles that they're testing and death to America because, you know, we can't rule anything out. I'm not sure what Iran's, I'm, I haven't had a, an intelligence briefing on Iran's uh, ballistic missile capabilities in quite some time now, but uh, they're certainly building toward ballistic missiles that can hit the United States and Washington, D.C. in particular, and their goal is to put nuclear weapons on top of those ballistic missiles and to blow up Israel and to blow up the United States of America. We're the great Satan, after all. So when the Biden administration, run by idiots, uh, when they say, oh, the uh, Iranians are on the brink of, there is an imminent ballistic missile attack on Israel, uh, I don't think they have the range to reach the United States with ballistic missiles, but 
but I don't know that for sure. And now the headlines are, are everywhere. Iran preparing missile attack on Israel. White House says they're telling everybody. And everybody's on high alert. And we have lots of ships in the region, which could also be targeted. And under Joe Biden, it, war through weakness, peace through strength. Joe Biden is weakness. Kamala Harris is even greater weakness, amazingly. All right, let's go to the telephones, Michael, because lots of uh, nice people want to talk about all the news of the day. Crazy. And again, tonight we have the big uh, Democrat uh, versus Republican vice presidential debate, J.D. Vance. And all the reports are all the reports are that Tim Walls is terrified. He's really nervous. He's quaking in his moccasins. He can he can barely. Oh, and another report came out today on last night on Tim Walls that he's been claiming for years, including in congressional testimony, that he was in Hong Kong when Tiananmen Square, the massacre of uh, students who were pining for freedom and democracy, they were massacred by the thousands in Tiananmen Square and beyond. And uh, Tim Walls has said, oh, yeah, I was in Hong Kong then. I was in Hong Kong. And it turns out that he's been lying about that the whole time. He was in Nebraska. Is that where he was? Nebraska? for the uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, even though he's been telling a very different story the whole time because Democrats lie about a lot of stuff. And and the news media just, uh, mm, 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 I'm telling you, they lie to us about it. Isn't it amazing? But he got caught in another lie because they lie about a lot of stuff. Also, did you see that Kamala Harris says that insomnia hit her after Biden dropped out of the uh, presidential. He was he was kicked to the curb, of course, thrown out the window. uh, And and that's okay. But Biden dropped out and Kamala Harris says that she was hit with insomnia and was sleep deprived (laughs) the day that Walls was picked. Don't blame me for picking walls. I was uh, I was up all night. I didn't even sleep a wink. I, I and the New York Post has the story, and it's uh, pretty amusing. Kamala Harris says insomnia hit after Biden dropped out. She was sleep deprived the day of Walls' pick, the day that she picked Tim Walls. That's what she's going to say. She's building in an excuse going forward here. Amazing. Yeah, and you see, also the Democrats are claiming that Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Emhoff is not only a new sex symbol for Democrats, uh, men and women, of course, but that he is the very model of masculinity in America. Mostly the most masculine Democrats are women at this point, I think, and the men, not really. Masculinity is not their bag. But a lot of the women, speaking of which, did you see the woman, she looked very masculine, that stole the Trump sign That was stuck in the dirt in downtown, it's Alexandria, right? It was Alexandria, Virginia. And this woman, she she was walking by, and there's a Trump sign stuck in the dirt. There's a patch of dirt around a tree on the sidewalk along the street um, in downtown Alexandria, Virginia. And this, this, I, I believe, a woman, but with Democrats, it's hard to tell. It might be a man, but I think it's a woman a very aggressive looking woman and she uh stamped her little feet up uh boom 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 and and uh, sturdy kind of a sturdy uh type and and she grabbed the trump the trump walls that the excuse me the trump vance sign uh pulled it out of the dirt folded it double folded it uh crushed it put it under arm her arm and then went doing the the stomp away Right next to it, there was a Harris Wall sign, which is why I mentioned the Harris. But right next to it, one foot from it. So these two signs, and they're like the signs you stick in your front yard, right? You know, three feet by two feet or whatever, with the metal frame, and you stick them in the dirt. And this, I believe, woman, Michael thinks it's a woman too, but we can't be certain because Democrats, you know. But uh, this woman in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, grabbed the the uh, Trump sign busted it up, folded it up, and stamped away because that's what the left does. The left is a violent gang of criminal miscreants, miscreants and, and they've got a lot of gender issues too, which is why we're having a little trouble saying for sure 
whether it's a woman. We think it's a woman. But some of their women have male appendages and stuff, you know. And they think Doug Emhoff is the model of masculinity in America. And that he's the new sex symbol for Democrats. Womp, womp, womp. Of course, uh, you know, birth rates have dropped off very significantly in the United States. And those things go together. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to the phones. Let's go to Michael calling from Burke, Virginia. Michael, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris. I appreciate you taking the call. Um, I had to call you out, though. I think you missed a couple of things here. And I'm honestly, I'm going to have to defend the, uh, the uh, unions on this one. I think they should drag this thing out for, I don't know, about 40 days or so. <laughs> and I think that we should point out that they were offered 50% and they're asking for 20, or 77% because they're trying to make up for the 27% inflation of camelonomics <laughs> and i do think it's hilarious because last night i was posting you know 3 a.m donald trump is using his money to put uh, rations and food and shelter and stuff on trucks for our samaritan's purse to let them deliver to north carolina and stuff she's over camel's over in vegas raising 50 more million dollars of other people's money for a four hundred thousand dollar job and somewhere in Wilmington, Joe Biden standing in the hall pooping pa- uh, tapioca again. <laughs> and so at a certain level, you know, I come from the hills of North Carolina up, up on the mountaintop. And I'm telling you right now, those people are paying attention to what's going on. They see how they are being treated after all this. Daggett could have turned around. He could have said, you know what, I'm going to take a, hun- a couple hundred of my union boys. We're going to go up to North Carolina or over to Georgia or over to South Carolina and help them out. No. He shut them down on purpose, and I think we want this to happen. I am so tired of Republicans being afraid to shut the government down to save the country. And so I have to applaud Mr. Daggett for actually having the testicular fortitude to commit suicide in broad daylight on the national media. That is wonderful. That is great. I want to... I wish we were cracking beers right now. That was uh, that was a thing of beauty. I uh, I I did I mentioned earlier that there are people who are hypothesizing that Joe Biden is not intervening and letting this happen because it torpedoes Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, which it may very well do if the yeah, account- yeah it may be the payback scenario. But right. the danger there is is that it, all he's got to do is if he does Taft Hartley. Guess what? Daggett's over there thinking, well, I can just go back to work and drag my feet. No, you can't, puppy, because you made sure they did not automate the, uh, the docks. That means they can now take the 20 million illegal military-age males and they can turn them into dock workers. I, uh, you know, I, and I love the idea. You're absolutely right. If the union had been smart, the leadership, they'd say, you know, we've got a lot of people who are not going to work tomorrow. Let's move them to help with hurricane relief. That would have been a brilliant move, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't do that. And there's all this talk. The, union, the unions used to have a pretty good representation in North Carolina with the furniture companies and what was it, Bear and Baxter, the medical supply companies and stuff. They used to have a pretty good representation. And like I said, I'm from the mountains. I know the story of Mate One. I know the story of the coal mines. I grew up with that. That is heritage. Yeah. This is not that battle. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I spent Christmas in Matewan during a coal strike one year, many years ago. Uh, The Washington Examiner has the headline, Biden won't invoke Taft-Hartley to stop port strike that could cost $5 billion a day. They like drama, you know. And honestly, if this is torpedoing Kamala, that's okay. All right. Uh, Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. There's war in Lebanon, um, war in Israel. Iran, according to the White House, preparing to uh, bombard Israel with ballistic missiles. There are no peace talks going on either, by the way. Our Secretary of State is nowhere to be found. Not in Geneva, not in New York, not in London. Uh, There are no peace talks going on in Stockholm, none anywhere, because the United States of America has imploded under Joe Biden. We have um, abandoned our position as the shining city on the hill. 
because the left is not on our side. They're anti-us. And uh, if we look bad, they're okay with that. And when the uh, the Iranians launch their ballistic missiles, do they have the range to hit Washington, D.C.? Have they developed a functional uh, family of nuclear weapons? Because they've promised to use nuclear weapons on Israel for openers when they get them. And you should uh, take them at their word. Just saying. And uh, there's war between Russia and Ukraine. And where are the peace talks going on, Michael? Where are the... Are there peace talks going on somewhere, anywhere, in Ouagadougou? Are there peace talks going on? Uh, the U.S. government leading peace talks for the, the Russia-Ukraine war, about a million casualties so far. What's the, uh, what's the problem? Hmm? Um, amazing. Now, you say that uh, our, our longshoreman boss was was grabbed by a Fox News lady a few minutes ago out on the street because he's, he's out there being a criminal, you know. And the nice Fox News lady saw Harold Daggett and said, hey, Harold Daggett, head of the Longshoremen's uh, Union, the association, uh, what's up with the big strike? It's the companies that don't want to. They don't want to sit here and be fair. It's the so companies that don't want to. that's why we're out here our livelihood. And if we fair. don't put our foot down now... They would like to run over us, and we're not going to allow that. You are going to grind the economy to a halt here on the East Coast and the no, Gulf no, Coast. No, no, they they not us. They they are. Don't spin it now because you're Fox News. <laughs> They're going to drive it. Why are you worried? They're going to drive it. Yeah, the union membership, <clears throat> you know, they are, <clears throat> in all probability, Trump people and uh, Newsmax people and, and Fox News people, and he's given Newsmax a hard time because these guys, you know. Are you worried that this strike is going to hurt the everyday American, the farmers that need to reach the, reach they the don't export care. market? They're Listen, telling me that they're going to hurt through all you of start this. to realize who the longshoremen are, right? Listen to this. Nobody cares people about never gave a shit about us until now, when they finally realized that the chain is being broke now. Cars won't come in. Food won't come in. Clothing won't come in. You know how many people depend on our jobs? Gangsterism, gangsterism. That's the, and listen, he sounds like a total New York thug. No offense to New York thugs. (laughs) 